So was Antonio trying to help Mirabelle throughout the entire movie? Lately, I've been really getting into a lot of fan theories about Encanto, and my favorite one involving Antonio is the idea that after he gains his gift to talk to animals, we often see animals in quite a few key scenes. For instance, the donkeys may have mentioned to Antonio that Luisa told Mirabel about Bruno's vision, thus leading to Pico the toucan randomly accompanying Mirabel in Bruno's room. After that, we see the Coati animals randomly putting together Bruno's vision during the catastrophe that was the proposal dinner. And then finally, we see Antonio show up in Bruno's hidden room in the walls to offer his help as the rats tell him everything. But maybe the rats aren't the only ones to tell him everything. What are your thoughts? Also, make sure to follow and comment below which Encanto character I should draw next. Isabella is next, and many of you all asked for her to be drawn in her final look. I definitely love her, but prior to watching the movie, I watched that short clip where she demands Mirabelle to apologize to her, and I honestly thought she was the villain in this story. Then I watched the movie and realized she wasn't. I've read a lot of comments about people saying that she's way too old to be beefing with her sister who's six years younger, and I don't know. My sister who's eight years older was definitely beefing with me while growing up, but to be fair, I really did fit the definition of annoying younger sister. But we're besties now, so it's all good. And that's what I love about Isabella and Mirabel, that at the end they actually become best friends. So like, follow, and comment below which Encanto character you'd like to see next. Mirabel is next, so let's talk about fan theories. The biggest topic is Mirabel's gift. I've read all types of theories from Mirabel didn't get a gift because she was meant to be the next matriarch to she didn't get a gift because she was nervous and her hands were sweaty and she wiped them on her dress and therefore she didn't get a gift? Yo, what? Another is Abuela unconsciously decides the gifts prior to the gifting ceremony as each gift somehow correlates with each child and grandchild. With Mirabel though, Abuela was unsure about her gift, thus leading to no gift. At first I found that theory plausible, but we're shown that Mirabel is artistic and loves to crochet, so I don't think so. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts on why Mirabel didn't get a gift in the comments, or maybe she did. Also, follow for more. Bruno Madrigal, take number two. And hopefully I got his skin tone more accurate than last time. The cool thing with being able to redraw him was I was finally able to add his hood in, which was what I wanted to do with my previous take on him. I also didn't struggle as much with the sketch this time, but I'm sure that mostly had to do with all the practice I put in before. I kept the glowing eyes and I feel like they're even more glowy this time probably because I had a better idea on where I wanted the highlights to go. Overall though, I feel like I captured him better this time around. From his worried wide eyes to the slight grimace in his mouth, he was definitely a character I kind of related to and I kind of hope they do an Encanto series because I'd love more backstory on him. So follow for more and comment which Encanto character you'd like to see me draw next. Luisa was honestly the first character in Encanto that I really loved. And I think the thing that made me gravitate the most to Luisa was the direction they went with her overall design. The fact that she didn't fit into this typical mainstream look that we've come to expect from Disney, but rather broke all those ideas by being very tall and muscular with a slightly deeper voice. And yet at the same time, they also made her beautiful, which I feel is important to point out because often the trope is when a girl fits into that strong, tall look. She's also made to look goofy or unappealing which gets tiring after a while when you've seen that played out hundreds of times. So it's refreshing to see a character like Luisa. Like and follow and leave a comment for who I should draw next from Encanto. It's the one you've been waiting for, Camilo. Gotta say, I'm pretty surprised by the love this character has gotten. Not saying it's undeserved, but Camilo was a character I didn't quite notice too much. I get the hype though. He's funny, a bit of a troublemaker, and deep down is clearly a big softie. One thing that sort of gets to me though is despite being only a few months older than Mirabelle, there wasn't a whole ton of interaction between them. The two. And one of my favorite fan theories is that he probably pulled away from Mirabelle when she didn't get her gift because he was scared he'd lose his, as if she were bad luck. And that's so sad. I hope we see their cousin friendship get better in a series or a sequel of some sort. So follow for more and who should I draw next from Encanto? I recently watched Encanto and completely fell in love with it, which if you follow my Insta, y'all probably know how crazy I am about it since I've drawn almost all the Madrigal grandchildren digitally in the last few weeks. But I wanted to try out my traditional skills with each character now. And obviously Dolores is the first one. I loved her character so much from how pretty she was to just how cute her little squeaks were. I also wanted to make sure I captured her sort of wide-eyed look where she's looking to the side. I feel like it gives a slightly anxious emotion to the character because that's kind of the 
feeling I got with her character throughout the movie. And I mean, if I was able to have super hearing, I think I'd be freaked out quite a bit too from discovering a lot more about people than what's necessary. Of course, like and follow for more and let me know which Encanto character you'd like to see me draw next in the comments.